Welcome to The Spine Guy. I'm Dr. Brian Sue, a fellowship trained spine surgeon in Marin, California. The Spine Guy is a channel dedicated to making the complex spine simple for patients to understand. I'll be posting videos weekly, so don't forget to hit the subscribe button to catch them as they come out. So the typical physical exam for a patient that has a lumbar disc herniation that I will do is pretty simple. Um, largely has to do with figuring out where the patient's pain is. If it's in the buttock, down the leg, to the top of the foot, the side of the foot, to the top of the big toe. Um, this is followed by a motor exam, which essentially means I examine someone's strength. And there are different ways to examine the strength of each different nerve. So this is the L4 nerve, L5 nerve, and S1 nerve. 90-95% of disc herniations are all in the lower lumbar spine, L3-4, L4-5, L5-S1. And so I typically test three basic muscles uh, to make sure that a patient has good strength because the degree of strength integrity or strength loss affects how we should treat that disc herniation. Several different ways to test the L4, L5, and the S1 nerve, but typically I'll have the patient seated and I'll have them extend their legs slightly with their heel on the floor and say, big toe up as strong as possible and push down on the entire forefoot. I should be able to lean on the entire forefoot and have no ability to push down. Full strength is essentially five out of five strength is full resistance where I can't push down. And she has five out of five strength. That's to test the L4 nerve. The L5 nerve can be tested by just a big toe. Interestingly, the L5 nerve sends supply to the muscle that controls extension to the big toe. So I ask patients to bring their big toe up towards the nose, push down. And if there's good resistance, it means the L5 nerve is strong. The S1 nerve is tough to test. The S1 nerve is the gastroxoleus muscle, which is the calf muscle. And because it's a very strong muscle, I can tell patients to push down like a gas pedal, but it's very difficult to detect weakness. The best way to detect weakness in the gastroxoleus muscle is to have the patient stand, stand on the bad leg like a stork on one leg and come up and down on tippy toes 10 times. It's okay to hold on to something for balance. If you can come up and down on your tippy toes 10 times, that means there's full strength. Interestingly, a heel walk is also a great way to test the L4 and L5 nerves. Remember I said the L4 and L5 nerves is dorsiflexion. Essentially, I tell patients to walk on their heels with their big toe up towards the sky. You can either march in place or take a few steps forward and backwards. If you can walk on your heels and this forefoot doesn't fall down, it means the L4 and L5 nerve are totally strong. After the physical examination, we typically will we'll get x-rays and MRIs as well to document the disc herniation. There are several different names that radiologists will use for disc herniations, problem with the discs, including protrusion, bulging, extrusion, sequestration, and there will be all these different terms. The only terms that really matter are essentially a bulge or herniation or an extruded fragment. So let me explain. I've used my niece's Play-Doh here to model a disc. So let's say we're looking at one of these and in a giant version. The inside of the disc is called the nucleus pulposus. And in real life, when we go in surgically, the nucleus is a soft rubbery structure, almost like a gummy bear. And the outside is called the annulus fibrosus. This is a donut layer of the jelly donut. The annulus fibrosus is exactly as it sounds, very fibrous, very thick, not like a gummy bear, where the inside is kind of jelly gummy bearish. What happens with a disc herniation is that the donut layer starts to thin. If the disc bulges, it can start to tent and cause bulging of the outside annulus. So the annulus is still intact, but the nucleus is bulging out and it's possibly hitting a nerve. A herniation is essentially when the donut layer is completely torn, and this is the typical patient that I see. And if the donut layer is torn, the jelly leaks out and it leaks out over the nerve. So this is the herniated disc portion. So this fragment here is that fragment. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click the like button and leave questions or feedback in the comment box below. Feel free to let me know what videos you would like to see in the future about the spine.